Thank you so much, Madam Vani. Thanks to Vasudev sir and all of you who have connected on this forum today. It's always my pleasure, as um, Mrs. Vani told you. I've been a part of the physical sessions and now the online sessions. And it's always a pleasure connecting with all of you. And it's my pleasure again to come back with another topic. And today we have, I think, about 20 of us are here and more are going to join soon, I think. Namaskara. Uh, Thank you, Madam Vani and Vasudev sir, for the amazing work you people are doing. And back and forth, you're inviting people like us and then giving us an opportunity to address more than anything to share our thoughts, exchange little information and go back enriched. Each time it's not that I share something with the participants. I learn a lot from each one of you and I'm being enriched. So thank you so much. Thank you. We can begin, right? Yes. Sure, sure. Yes, yes. And uh, now that we are into this online almost a year ago we started i think so we are all quite comfortable i'm sure so like my programs always i request you all to be active interactive through the chat box and of course unmuting and speaking with me let's keep it interactive so before i begin the vani madam has told you and of course the whatsapp messages and the mail was shared the topic was there and uh so many of you are here with us today for this something different, intriguing topic, different and interesting. But how is study circle and meditation? And generally, we see look at the programs that something which has a spiritual bent of mind, something different on yoga. We have spoken many different things. How is today's topic relevant to each of us? Why are we talking about Gen Z? And why is it we are talking about children, the next generation, and what has it got to do with study circle and meditation? How relevant is the topic today? And when you looked at the title, Gen, Zen, Gen Z or Gen Z, what came to our mind? Is it something important for us? Did you feel that? Or it's out of syllabus, Anastha. What is the first thought that came to your mind? What is it that you understand from this title or the topic? Let's quickly get your answers or reply from the chat box. I'm only asking about the title, its relevance, its meaning. Yes, your answers, please. Namaste to everybody. Yes, VHD expansion, Chris, says it is Srimati Vishindevi, Harbhagwan Das, Danumal. They are the philanthropist. Danumal family donated way back in 1951, rupees 1 lakh for women welfare, education and services. So that's how this college where I work, it's a government college. This came into existence with the donation of rupees 1 lakh from the Dhanumal family, Srimati Vishindevi Harbhagwandas Dhanumal. Thank you so much for your thing. And earlier this... it was uh, known as Government Home Science College. Yes. It so is... Many people may know it by that name also. Yeah, the actual name is Srimati Vishindevi Harbhagwandas Dhanumal. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's government college. But... Though it's a government college, it has got its name from the donor. So you can just imagine way back in 1951, one lakh was equal to probably how many crores? You can just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and so that the erstwhile uh, Mysore government added matching grant and that's how the building came up. And thousands of girls have passed out of this uh, portals of this institution and they are all over the world in, in different careers. So that's the thing about the beautiful history of this college. Okay, very relevant. We always need to understand and interact with our young children. Awesome. Okay, relationship is important. To live in harmony with children, we need to understand. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, quick answers. Another five seconds. So we are addressing the seniors here, most of you all. And we generally talk about much more relevant topics to our age. It could be our spirituality or connect body mind and soul many many things but today we are talking about youngsters we are not talking about our own selves directly but we are talking about a younger generation gen z why so relationship we need good understanding with family members absolutely aruna with family members correct 
to live in harmony with children, we need to, so irrespective of what our age is today, we might be 30, 40, 60, 70, whatever, but all of us interact with youngsters in various capacities in different ways. At our own home, you go to a bank, you go to a hospital, you go to any other place, we are interacting with people of different age groups, different generations. So absolutely right. Whatever my age today, I cannot live in an island or not in isolation. I need to understand people of other age groups, younger than me, much, much younger than me, much, much different than me. There's a whole lot of difference. The 50s, the 60s and the 70s and you look at the present teens. The way they think, the way they behave, the way they dress, the way they eat, much different. I may not even like any of those, but still we are a part of the society. So I need to be aware of what the Gen Z is. So for that, this session is important. Brilliant. Very important to how others, especially youngsters, we, okay, thank you all so much. So I asked you this question just to do a kind of a check for my own self. It is self-appraisal. How important, how relevant is the topic that me and Vani Madam have brought this to the forum. So we just wanted to check out, I just wanted to check out that. Okay, thanks to you all. So no doubt about it. This topic is relevant and we understand what it is. So when we say Gen Z, we are talking about the present youngsters. Generally, those born between 1996 and 2012, who are less than about 24 years presently. Though these particular boundaries and demarcations are more prominent in the Western culture and Western world, very slowly, even in our country, we are referring to it as Gen Z, Millennials, Alpha, etc., etc. Otherwise, basically, this concept originated in the West. They were called people who were born in the 1930s and 40s. They were called as baby boomers and all that. So basically, the concept or, or these terminologies originated in the West. But very much it is being used in different contexts in our own country. So when we are talking about the generation or Gen Z, we are talking about those born between 1996 to 2000. Well, of course, it's not a very watertight compartment. It's not a strict demarcation, but around that children or youth who are in their you know, less than 24 years of age. And we are not, when we say Gen Z, we are not talking about those children who are less than 10 years. They're still very young into their families. When we say, talk about these Zs or Ys or millennials, we are referring to the teenagers up to their particular youth period. So when I say this, I'm referring to the 10 and 23 year old youngsters, I'm sure each of you interact with this age bracket, 10, 12 to 25 year people, your grandchildren, your children, nephews, nieces, and in the metro, in a shop, in a bank, market, etc., etc., etc. Why do they behave in a particular way? What business I have with them? Let's see all about that. And almost 600 million, I'm talking about India, 600 million are below the age of 25. That is a Gen Z, what we are talking. It's not a small number. It's a huge number, about 600 million are in this age group. And just the individuals whom we are addressing today in the talk, as I told you, between the 10 and 25 year old, just this group is about 472 million. So when we step out of the house, every next person could be a Gen Z. So how do I understand? What is it that we need to do? So this is just, as I was telling you a little while ago, the whole concept or these terminologies originated from the West. So each of these generations were given a particular title, silent generation, the baby boomers, the millennials, the Gen Z, the forthcoming, the next, which is going to emerge very soon is called as Generation Alpha. But today's talk, we are talking about the present youth who are in their early teens to 24, 25 year old, those youngsters. But of course, we are also referring to the millennials and the overall younger generation is what I'm talking about. So before, let's get into the actuals of the topic. Let me just, I'm this going to be, this is going to be a lot of interaction. I, I want more interaction and answers from you all. 
and uh, this session is not to preach or to give you solutions probably together let's sit and try and understand but before we get into that exercise let me all ask you all what is it that comes to our mind or what are the common characteristics of the youngsters you are experiencing when you see youngsters at your own place or around how are they in general what is it that is outstanding or characteristics it could be about their culture thought processes aptitude dressing anything and everything let's hear it from tech savvy very good yes yes suma says they are tech savvy yes what else how very are... honest and clear about their goals and priorities wonderful honest and clear about goals and priorities well said we are going to discuss each of these yes more answers please you could unmute and speak or you could put it in the chat box both are fine with me how are our gen z Most madam yes sir Ashok yes ashok sir imanu i'll just come back to you yes ashok sir they are very firm very firm assertive firm yes. wonderful yes always in a hurry rama says always in a hurry very smart technically very advanced okay if there is any problem with my phone or my system or our system these are the first people whom we are going to summon call them yes technically advanced not respecting seniors okay promotes says not respecting seniors so there's a flip side also yes all right emotionally very aware emotionally aware okay and very mature also okay okay emotionally aware and mature no patience balaji sir says no patience they are always in a hurry thalme no dilla no patience okay and there's a, a little disclaimer which i want to make in the beginning itself whenever either you or me when we are discussing about the gen z with due respect to both the generations we are not specifically talking about one individual or anything it is just these are all generalized opinions what we are talking of course there will be individual differences there will be a gen z youngster with a lot of patience and caring attitude for his own grandparents and parents at home a person who is very respectful to others so there are exceptions to all these whatever we are discussing are generalized statements about a particular generation nothing to do with individuals no tags no labelings for anyone we are only discussing generalized opinions okay imbalance in maturity okay they want immediate results promote says immediate results we call this as instant gratification name it i want it check antara immediately immediate grat gratification okay yes immediate result instant gratification they have no time to slow coaches like us yes the seniors the grandparents at home could be very boring for them nothing interesting they're so slow okay so no time for them ignorant to our traditions and cultures possible ignorant to traditions and cultures ignorant probably may not respect so the answers i'm getting there is something very different very mature emotionally aware tech savvy etc 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 at the same time we are also talking about the other side of them so is it a fact is it a myth if it is a fact why are they that way what is it that ca we can do can we sit here and complain about the flaws in them is there anything that we can do about is what we are going to go and look forward so they are thinking more global and not bothered about religion okay yes let me split this answer nirmala ma'am into two halves they are thinking more global yes sitting in the comforts of the drawing room they are able to connect understand think at the global level not bothered about religion that's a different aspect there are two different aspects you put them in one sentence yes not bothered about religion yes probably i mean again as i told you individual opinions we will see what exactly the whole thing is about all right so yes
all that you told me yes you are right these are the gen z or this generation is the one which was born into technology the 30 plus or early or late 20s etc although you are older children at home they are into smartphones and technology etc but they also remember a time when they had to wait for internet connection they also remember a time when mobile phones were not the regular way of communication they know a time before technology but the generation what we are referring to right now are the ones who were born into technology they were raised with information on their fingertips mobiles apps have entered their classrooms their living room their it's everywhere and this is the first social generation which has grown up with the access to internet earlier if you remember if you you can tell me we had to wait we had to pay for it and then wait it was not all around us it was not 24 hours it was not accessible but now it's not so we have wifi enabled classrooms we have 24 bar 7 networking so these are majorly digital natives they were born in with technology they were born with they were they've been wired right from the time they've been born they don't remember or they've not experienced a time where technology was not around them so this is the first generation to have grown up with a smartphone what does a smartphone do for us although we have been using mobile phones when it came about say two decades back mobile phones are basically to connect with people to communicate people when we are out of the landline area but now what does a smartphone do probably i should be asking what does a smartphone not do it's that so just imagine a generation of people or individuals where this smartphone is bringing the entire world into their mushti in their palm they have everything information entertainment you name it it's there want to pay your bill want to pay your fees want to connect want gp everything and anything is there so what's happening more time on electronic devices less time probably when you said they don't have time to connect with people they don't have time you are in a way right why because the world i have in my hand is so interesting so intriguing that i don't want to look around the seniors at home are so boring in fact the television itself is so boring because i can't control everything there whereas my phone with click of a button i can get the information do what i want i can be playing here i can be connecting with somebody so i am in entire control of what i want the pace the type everything is in my hands so this is the kind of independence and this is the kind of whatever the students the individuals are getting so there's no time for other things which are slow in nature it could be reading books it could be talking to their grandparents it could be it's so boring the world is passing at a very slow pace whereas the world in my hand is much more faster and you and me may find it very very silly or very different they're also documentarians what they ate to what they did a new set of clothes it could be something very small and simple for us that's there as evidence documented posted on insta facebook etc they documentarians whereas you me or the seniors what did we do probably one album wedding album probably which has been cherished stored for years those film photographs the black and white films or the 36 roll pictures well documented well preserved in the album and those pictures are of some milestone events marriage engagement baby's birth etc but today people are documenting what anything and everything you step out of the house you click a selfie and put it on the facebook and for you and me it's nothing worth documenting probably but that's how the generation is why are they accessibility interest want to be connected this is the world they have seen they have grown up so they feel it's completely normal for seniors 60 plus 50 plus or the middle aged 
probably we find it very absurd, very silly, very weird. But what is it that you and me can do? We will talk about that. So internet is second generation. And as one of you rightly said, instant gratification. All information should be available immediately right now. Can't wait. So this is, in a nutshell, the generation Gen Z we are talking about. And thank you. Each of you gave me varied points in different words, almost summarizing the same thing. This is exactly we are, the how the group is. So for you and me, LOL can be very silly. The age of you know, TL and DR. Too long, didn't read. Emojis, emoticons, lols, all these are very, very common. This is their lingo. This is their vocabulary. This is how they speak. But we have grown up talking about grammar. We have spent hours learning about English vocabulary. Our grammar teacher could have been very strict, even if you made a spelling mistake or an error or grammatically something not right. Probably your letters, letter writing and essays wouldn't be passed at all. But today, that is how it is. LOL. TL. GM. That's how it goes. Right now, let me just stop here and ask for your opinion, whatever we have been discussing. Is it what we are seeing around? Are you experienced this yourselves? If so, let me see an S. Yes. Very true, very true. Absolutely. So this is how, this is what they are. So who is right here? Sitting here, when we look at them, everything looks so different. So silly, maybe absurd, maybe crazy, maybe. So is it that I am right, they are wrong? Or rather, we are right and they are wrong? I we don't understand that the language. Same, the same question our parents would have felt about us. Absolutely, sir. Same question our parents would have felt. Yes. If you just look at, you know, you can Google Aristotle's statement, 3,000 or many, many years and centuries back. He writes that, the generation of today doesn't respect elders. They sit with their legs crossed and it's a very difficult generation to manage and they don't even have any regards for their parents. When was this written? Centuries back. So you can imagine every generation had some kind of complaints. Now they looked at the present generation very differently. They didn't understand them. They felt that there is disregard. But this has been, as was they said, rightly said, our parents probably felt the same thing about us. It's just that the technology has come in a very big way. And what you and me saw are as a change over a period of time, our children are seeing it suddenly, instantly. So in fact, they are being bombarded with information. Probably you and me didn't have to face this kind of insurge or sudden change, but that is how these children are. But as you rightly said, they are too good with technology. They can grasp information like that. And as Vani Ma'am was saying, they're very much aware, very mature. They know what they're speaking. They're very firm. So there are two sides to the coin. Yes, we don't understand it. Or oh, right. their emojis, but they are very much faster. Right, sir? So whether they are right or wrong, as Vasudev sir said, our parents have to answer about ourselves. So let's move ahead. This is how they are. Fast response. You ask them anything. Even before we give, give them an answer, they would have Googled and they'll get you. Probably we all grew up with newspaper. For us, the news, the headlines that comes tomorrow morning is, for, is that which we were, would wait. Of course, the TV is there, but etc. But within a jiffy, the youngsters today are able to give you the news of everything that's happening around. No waiting for newspaper, no waiting for the news, but it's all in their hands. 
demand for fast response, social media, highly connected, any part of the world, tech savvy. You and me, shopping was a great pastime probably, going to a mall, going to a bookstore or whatever. Online shopping, quick. You get it, you book it, you don't like it, you send it back with an, in the next courier. Zomatos, Dunzos. We never heard of these things. And children are very comfortable with all this. The technology has made their life faster, simpler. And reading and acquiring information is a waste of time for the young generation. Why? Because why should we be wasting time mastering or memorizing the information when the information is just available? Let us use our brain for something else more creative, more workable. So the entire thinking has, there's a lot of shift or a paradigm shift in each and everything. This is how the world is for them. Now let's talk about the seniors, the middle age, the 60 plus or the 60s. Probably you'll agree with me, the seniors who are here with me. If you just go back to your own life a couple of decades back when you got married, set up your family, etc. Entire life your earning was for your children. Myself, for my family. There was no concept or there was a lesser concept of me, myself. Whatever I do is for my children. Whatever I do, I want to do the best for my children. I wouldn't mind sacrificing my pleasures for the sake of my children. The world was centered around children. That's how the seniors brought up their children. Now that was their world. Why? Because that is the kind of upbringing you all had, or rather all of us had. Myself is equal to children. Hierarchical culture, respecting the eldermost person at home, a joint family system. Guru Galirbodu, or it could be an elder person, the elder sibling, in fact. Rama and Lakshmana concept, respecting the elder brother and siblings at home, sisters-in-law, the grandparents. There was so much of reverence and respect and hierarchical culture. And without any questions asked, yours faithfully, the seniors or the past generation or the present seniors were ready to accept as a dictum. No questions asked. My dad said this, I'm doing this. My brother said this, I have to do this. We respected it. Right, wrong, what are the repercussions? We're not debating about that. But I'm just trying to present before how it's been for the seniors may not be able to adapt quickly to the social, cultural, and technological changes happening around us. As seniors, we might have started using, or you might have started using smartphones, the emails, etc. But all those things that come with the change of culture and social thing is not acceptable to us. It could be a home, the concept of homosexuality. It could be the living in relationship. It could be you do anything on a, a festival day. It does not matter. The, the kind of thinking what the present generation has probably. Many of these things are totally not acceptable for seniors. There was a time when a festival was so, it was the way it was practiced. Let's talk about the Diwali. Just the last week it was done. Early morning, Abhyanjana, Enes Nana Irbodu. The ritual of lighting lamps. The entire, the three days, the Nanalakshmi Puja, each house has it, had its own sacred ways. So many things have been relaxed. In fact, today festival is eating out. All the hotels are booked. The festival lunch and dinner is available in all different types of hotels. And why should we be slogging at home on a, the day of a holiday in the kitchen, rather when everything is available outside. Kajaya to Holige, everything is available outside. So why should we waste time? Again, not debating, not criticizing anyone's habits or beliefs. Just telling that this is how the situation around us is. Who is right, who is wrong? Again, we are nobody to comment about that. Each family, each individual has their own ways or practices. 
but how and why these changes have happened what is it that we need to do is the only thing we are looking at so as seniors there are many things which you may not agree with you don't believe you don't feel it is right but the generation with whom we are dealing are totally different the way they have been brought up the way they are experiencing or feeling the world is totally totally different what you see is what they don't see you and me are looking at the world the same world in two different ways so you don't see what they are seeing when we don't speak their language when we don't see what they are seeing how competent are we to comment or criticize about their thing does it mean that whatever youngsters do is right and whatever the seniors do is outdated no not at all i'm only trying to say that two people looking at the same thing in two different dimensions or two different ways if you look at digit 9 from this side it looks like 9 to me a person standing on the other side it looks like 6 who is right who is wrong both of us are right we only need to change places that's it but that's the problem we don't do it i look at it from my own perspective and expect the other person the daughter in law the grandchild to change and adapt the changing adaptation flexibility should be from both sides that's something very important so the senior is more interested in traditional roles yes gone are those days probably now both husband and wife cooking in the kitchen taking care of the baby and working outside but earlier few generations a few decades back very clearly specified roles what a woman does what a man does and what happens in a home probably a husband could return from office sit in a couch and then demand for a cup of coffee today it might not be come prepare your coffee and give it to me it could be lot of change and shifts in the way we are performing way we are relating to each other so traditional roles have changed and as seniors you have grown in a totally different world with totally different priorities if what we saw about seniors you feel is right let me quickly get your answers myself is equal to my family does that statement get your approval if it is a yes let me see an yes culturally socially there are many things which we don't agree in the present days if you think that's an s as seniors yes okay very good if the seniors have accepted and changed completely awesome less friction or no friction if everyone can get that shift or change or get into that flexible mood that's wonderful no choice okay no choice let's discuss about that so because there is no choice we should be doing or is there anything else we'll just talk about it as we go a little forward yes let me just quickly get the answers for that question do you agree with those phrases about seniors myself is equal to my family all what i do is for my children i need to save for my children does not matter what i do with my earning but i need to do for them yes if we don't adjust we'll be left out absolutely no ma'am madam if we don't change we'll be left out all right good we are or rather i am addressing a group of people who are much more empowered ready to shift ready to change rather you have understood the very essence of life that change is the only thing that's constant and if we have to move ahead and if we need peace of mind and we need to be accepted in the group we need to change brilliant that's important actually so why are we why are we like this why are the gen z or the other generation like that who is right who is wrong why is it rupees 100 matters so much to me when something is being done zoed or swigged or i feel it's a waste of money whereas my grandchild or my child or my youngster at home feels that it's nothing come on grandma 200 is nothing just get it swiggy just get it done so for me the 200 or for you but the 200 may be a big amount or it could be their dressing it could be their shopping it could be there maybe 
so many different ways they are operating who is right who are who is wrong why are they like that or why am i like this why are you like this let's understand this with this theory called a socio ecological perspective theory put forth by yuri bronfen brenner one of the ecologist socio ecological theorist yuri bronfen brenner talks about this wonderful theory called as socio ecological perspective theory and this theory more or less explains the difference in the generations so although it is a purely a psychological or a developmental concept i would like to relate it to this particular topic and bring it to meditation and study circle as an academic concept as a theory so what is it you see different concentric circles in the picture here small circle and around it there are multiple bigger circles if you look at the innermost of the core circle the smallest green there where the word individual is written this is the microcosm this is the i or this is where i am the individual this is me when you were born or your own self there is a small world within yourself where you nurture your believe your attitude your dreams everything what you see in the green color there the individual there are many things about you which i don't know i might have lived with you i might have known you for years but there are so many things about you which i don't know as a father and a daughter as a husband and a wife there are so many things the deep secrets many things which i do not know about you you are a world in your own self so that is the innermost circle i me with all my aspirations dreams my fears my weaknesses etc that's the, that's called as a microcosm am i just alone am i just yes i am an individual but am i alone throughout no around me there are other people there are other influences there is my family my parents my home my neighborhood my grandparents the school etc so apart from this individual the innermost part there is this micro system this is called as the, the other name for this theory is also it is called as a systems theory there are many multiple systems or layers it says that there are different layers around an individual so one is the indi individual with all your deep secrets and thoughts etc around you is your immediate family which is called as a micro system the home neighborhood etc so there is always a constant interaction between the two between the micro system and the individual what is happening in the family is affecting the individual if there is a conflict if there is an alcoholic father if there is a problem in the family that is directly or indirectly influencing the child and how does a child get affected again that depends on how i am if i am a very sensitive individual i get affected by the criticism that's happening around if i am a very sensitive child in the family i get affected by the comparison that my parents are doing with the two siblings otherwise i am a different child i am i i am more of an extrovert i don't bother much about people i'm a friendly easy going person so i don't care so much about the criticism or the bullying that's happening around me hope you are understanding so there's a constant dynamic interaction between the individual and the immediate micro system does that interaction end there no there is another system around called as a meso system the bigger world the school the work the businesses that we do etc etc the meso system constant interaction the transfer the father has the multiple times the father or the mother shifts residence or moves to different hall places can have direct indirect influence on the individual so there is a constant interaction from the meso system to the individual is that all i'm talking about how our personality emerges how we all change what we learn does that end there no there is an exo system bigger one mass media the kind of learning that's happening around the kind of technology that is around us the mass media the television when the television came into our drawing rooms in the early 80s that's when we started looking or understanding about different culture different 
think that itself was a big influence. What this in the 60s, what seniors did not see, the youngsters in the 80s started seeing that sitting in the comforts of the drawing room. There are times when the middle aged who are in their middle years remember a time when everyone used to wait for the Chitrahar. One Thursday or Wednesday, Chitrahar, probably about eight from 8 to 8.30 when we were all small kids, we would wait for those songs, that half an hour Chitrahar, the media's influence. It was a big thing for us. Now, look, just look at that. Mass media, the influence of mass media in the 80s, influence of media today, there's a whole lot of difference. Does that end there? No. The macro system, the kind of cultural values that each of us share. When you were youngsters, the kind of culture, the kind of rituals, the kind of celebrations that you all grew up with, there's a whole lot of shift in the macro system. The way the festivals are celebrated, the way the values are nurtured, there's a whole lot of change in the macro system. So if you see the micro, the meso, the exo, the macro, every system, every layer around us has changed. As a senior citizen, you have grown up in a different system with different multiple layers changing every now. And the present generation is entirely living in different layers, different kinds of schools. When Blackboard is the only way we learn, our youngsters today, Blackboard is, is a pass. Smart phones, smart boards, Wi-Fi enabled classrooms are there. In fact, very soon, probably teachers will be replaced by artificial intelligence and robots. Teachers and traditional teaching could be out of schools. We really don't know. Homeschooling may come in a very big way. Robotic learning and artificial intelligence will be in a big way. So which means to say that look at the layers that has changed. The school, the microsystem has changed. The media has changed for our children. The technology has changed. Why I'm talking about this scientific phenomenon here is just look at ourselves. We have grown up with different layers around us, which means to say these influences have shaped us very differently. It has influenced our thoughts, our minds, our dressing to eating, to our spending habits, our beliefs, etc. Whereas the youngsters today are growing up in an entirely different layer. Naturally, their belief their thinking will be, could be totally opposite. Two different diameters, two different ways. That's why we see all these shifts and differences. I have spoken about the micro, meso, exo, macro. I have spoken about the culture, the value, the religion, the nationality influence, etc., etc. But I'm, uh, before I ask you this question, let me just uh, stop here and ask, does this, this I mean, um, seem interesting or do you think this systems theory is applicable to us and to the present generation, to everybody? Do you think this is a concept which holds water or worth understanding? If so, let me get a yes or an answer. Then we are talking about these multiple layers and how human beings behave. Do you think this is relevant? for us to understand. Yes, LMS may play, replace teachers, absolutely. Today even we are talking about credits. We are talking about spiritually. Yes, sir. Even spiritually, madam, um, it is... Manomaya kosha, annamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, vignanamaya kosha, we are living in different layers. Yes. We live in different uh, layers, but also uh, the one thing that everyone accepts is a strong interconnectedness of everyone and everything with everyone and everything. Everyone and everything. True, so true. there is no isolated existence. So in that sense, um, there is no difference between science and religion as far as interconnectedness of beings are concerned. Very true. It's just what not with it? humans with humans. It's humans with animals. Humans animals. With beings. Uh, <laughs> Yes. So in that in that way, it is very contextual. Very. Good. I think this is a very very evergreen subject. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you for that, sir. Yes, very rightly said. It's not just about it's not just about people. There is a connect, direct and indirect connect 
between people, environment, the higher self, everything in fact. Does this layer stop here? I have spoken about nationality, the media, the school, the micro, etc., etc. Is this all or is there any other further influence which is influencing the different generations and people apart from the nationality, the media, the culture, etc., etc.? I'm asking you this question. Is there any other thing in the macro system that influences you, me, the Gen Z, anybody for that matter? If so, what is that system? I think what technology. I uh, think technology. technology can come in one of those systems in between the layers. Yes. So, You're so right, the is there previous, anything that I have not spoken about which can be included here? Yes, Madam, Ashoka. previously we used to have joint families with about 8 to 10 members. Hmm. Now hmm. it is uh, only 3 or 4 members Correct, in a sir. family. So that comes that within a lot of difference. Yes, because that... previously, all the maybe five, six children uh, parents had, they had they, there was no this thing alternative for them to adjust to with we, each other. Now, right. with one child under two children, so there's no question of any adjustment on such thing. Right, sir. So the children talking... will have their own way. Right, right. So, Ashok, sir, you are talking about the micro system. See, home is right here. So, what you're saying is there's a lot of change that has happened within the home. So there's a lot of change in the micro system. I agree. I'm, what I'm asking you is, other than all these things, the home changes in the home, changes in probably the different uh, media, technology, etc. Is there even all encompassing phenomenon or influence that can See, happen to individuals? Previously, we used to have the chance to earn mm -hmm. money and all those things mm -hmm. around, around us only. Mm -hmm. Now, whole world is... Uh, there for anybody to earn and go study everything. True, true, so that true. That makes a lot of difference. Correct. Their way of thinking. See, some people settle permanently in America. Uh, you know, I mean, so, so many things I don't want to comment. Yes. But that yeah. was not there about 50, Absolutely. 60, 70 years before. Correct, sir. Anything mm -hmm. else, Nirmala ma'am? You want to say something? We, we are living in a global village. Global village, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you don't know from where the influence will come. True. It, it might come from Timbuktu. It might come from Australia. Timbuktu to Kerala, anywhere. Yes. yes. Uh, and the child is jumping around with what information it has got. And the mother and father are just perplexed. They are not able to understand what is Timbuktu mm -hmm. or the ideas. Right. So all this put together, what can we call this as? You're talking about media, you're talking about technology, you're talking about many things. Is there one name for this layer? What can we name it as? What system is it? Me so micro, we have spoken about these systems. What is this system? What is it that all of you are talking about? Suppose this child was born 50 years back. You think this child would have been exposed to this global phenomenon, the smart, whatever. No, right? So what is it that we are talking about? Something has a phenomenal influence on a person. This particular... I think blurring of boundaries. Okay. Right. You are all right. Let me just put it in a perspective. We are talking about time or samayan thenarathivala. The chronology, the chrono system, the ultimate thing is the chrono the time when we are born. If we were born 60 years back or last century, the way would have been brought up, our thinking, our dressing, our role models, everything would have been different. Let's not go that far. Children born in 2019 or 20, those children who are infants now, for them, wearing a mask, is the way, it's a normal thing, probably. That's what they're seeing. That's the way we cover ourselves. A mask is also a way of life. Because this child is born during this chronos time or the time frame of COVID-19, where sanitizing, social distancing, online teaching, wearing a mask is the new norm. So... What I'm trying to say, the final influence on all of us 
the way we are why we are is the chrono or the time when we were born those people who were born during the second world war those people who have seen the pre independence those of us those people who have seen the drought and the famine etc etc their thinking their beliefs everything is shaped due to the our samidal or yen nodidro that remains or majority of what we are is also because of what we have seen around the time frame when we are born influences us in a very very big way so children born in the 90s digitally native born into technology that is a time they have born and that is what they have been seeing and today they have just adapted to technology like fish taking to water so so much of impact the chrono system has on each of us which very very difficult to as sir said to blur the boundary or take it away from us that's exactly why when a senior citizen counts that every penny every rupee and values he is right in his own way because during his tenure or during his time that ane or paisa whatever he earned had so much of value during those days and that is so much imprint is imprinted in his or her mind that today i look at money in that way or i look at relationship in that way but fast forward 40 50 years today's teenagers they have being born or what they are seeing is fragile relationship quick gratification so at this particular time the world around them is moving in this way and for them these things are right this is the dictum so the time the samaya ante en helthivela this influences human beings in a very 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 big way that's why each of us are different and we need to respect that nobody can take away this experience from us or from our mind so we need to respect that end of the day we are part of this entire system so each of us are right in our own way if a youngster believes in a particular thing this is what he has seen this is what he has witnessed and he or she is right in his way similarly you and me our have our own perspectives and we are right but we are at logger heads many a times because of this these multiple layers and its influence on us and the way we have grown up this is really causing a lot of conflicts and this is where we need to raise about and do something better about that for that very importantly we need to understand the present generation as we started off in the beginning the gen z are all around us a vast 472 million of them with us in the family outside giving you different kinds of services and in the coming years the bureaucrats the chief ministers of this state the prime minister of the country various technocrats and bureaucrats will be the gen z people who are today's youngsters will be ruling the world will be drafting the policies will be taking the major decisions for you and me so we need to understand them very importantly we may have a lot of complaints or criticisms they may be very different from you and me they have their own pluses but they may be very very different from the seniors of today but these are the people in whose hands the world will be in the coming years and a lot of our safety health finance economy will be decided or held by the present gen z who think very differently from us who are very different in the way they are so let's try and understand them let's understand that all this that is the technology the media the chrono system or the time the experiences what they have derived or understood all that have defined or has had a great influence on their mindset their thinking their belief their dressing everything so when they very casually say that gay marriages or lesbian marriage is fine that's what they have seen around right and wrong again it's their belief 
non vegetarianism and vegetarianism it could be any of those thoughts which are very different from you and me but that's how they are and they have been shaped by the technology the time the global concept etc and gen z is entrepreneurial multitasking mani madam was telling earlier they are ready to take decisions they are multitasking very you talk to a youngster he or she is already thinking of a startup and very beautifully there are youngsters who have come up with wonderful apps today whatever we are using has been a brain child of some youngster some young mind somewhere in the part of the world they are entrepreneurial multitasking and what we need to spend hours to learn it comes like a thing for them very easy flexible openness yes they are open to change they are very flexible yes they may not be religious but they are rational and they ask you question why should i do that why should i get up early in the morning before sunset and pray only why not later they are rational they want to ask questions whether and please remember seniors today as i was telling you maybe the seniors were brought up at a time when they never questioned authority what the father said that the elder of the family said no other choice they obeyed and respected but today they have grown up at a different time with a different experience that they question they ask they want to find out logical explanation for everything is it wrong may not be it's just that i don't see what they are seeing it's just that rational may get out of relationship as easily as they get into it and they're very vocal they want to be very expressive and they as i was telling you documentarians they want to it's a show off generation they want to show it to people so what was an acquired behavior for the previous generations it's a way of life for a gen z no struggle it comes very easy for them but the flip side as you all rightly said it is a generation with less patience short attention attention span again reason for that why because the world is in their hands it's completely under control their control whatever i can control i can switch from a video to a youtube channel to something else to something i can i can control what i see what i watch my experience whereas as a teenager you had to wait for that theater the single screen theater your dad had to book the ticket or you had to go stand in a queue purchase a ticket and watch that movie and the two and a half year our experience was an experience for life but today any movie netflix or any other th- channel it's available we don't even have to wait so when that is the way the world is functioning around when that is a system the chrono the time has changed they are less patient they have short attention span so there is a reason for this not saying that it's right or wrong but there's a reason why they are like that what is it that we need to do we should spend a little time in that so they are rebels yes maybe for a purpose maybe to become more assertive yes privacy is not a concern what you wanted to keep it to your own self or your own family the young people are out there to discuss shout it from a platform or post it on their insta etc whether they are right or wrong we are not here to judge them just trying to understand them so what is it that we need to do totally understand that the seniors of today and the youngsters of t- today are two different people with two different ideologies many a times con- conflicting ideologies but why they are that way is for many reasons they are upbringing the different systems the time the media everything has shaped you into what you are and you are very different from today's generation let's accept that we are very different but can we leave it at that do we need to build bridges or just comment criticize about the differences about the gaps you might say there is no choice so we may have to adjust is it that we don't have any choice or is it that that's the best way the healthy way the organic way to live yes because this 
society or this world is made up of people of all generations, of all ages. It's not my world alone. As much right I and you have, the youngsters also have with their different beliefs and mannerisms and personalities. So what can be done to build gaps? How do we connect bridges? What can be done? How can we do? Why should we do, by the way? And where should all these changes begin? And when should be done? Is a question I am posing you. I'm not here to give you answers. I would like to get answers from your side. What is it that we need to do? Should we be sitting and complaining about the present generation? Or is there something good in them which we can learn? Or is there something where together we can collaborate rather than get into conflict? Can we collaborate? Yes, so-and-so's grandchild is very good in technology. And this is where I lack. Can I learn something? Can I collaborate? Where should the change begin? Why? How can it be done? How can these relationships be fostered at home, in a company, in an office, in a metro, on the road, wherever, in the market, etc., etc., etc.? What can be done? So let's together brainstorm for the next, say, 10 minutes. Because as I told you, I'm not here to give answers. Rather, together, let's explore the alternatives and answers and strengthen and foster relationships. Because end of the day, Let's understand that I'm different, he or she is different, but together we need to create a better world for all of us because world society is heterogeneous. Each of us, not just people, the nature, the flora and fauna, everything has its own right to live and survive. So how do we do that is a question. Together, let's put our heads together. Yes, no complaints, simple phenomena, no complaints, accept. Wonderful, Chris. No complaints. I am, this is me, that's you. Both of us agree to disagree. Does not matter. But end of it, I love you, you love me, and it's fine. Let's move on. Let's let go and move on. Beautiful. No complaints. Rama says, accept, learn, proceed. They're part of us. Beautiful. Accept it. Accept that they are different. Accept that what I say may not be okay to somebody else. That's because she has grown up in a different way. Her experience has been different. Her perception of the world is different. So accept, learn. Yes, before complaining, is there something that I can learn from the youngsters? They're so vocal. We have lived our entire lives, living the life of somebody. Never had a life of my own. Always I did something for my wife, for my husband, for so-and-so. Can I learn from today's youngsters who are so vocal, who are so independent? Can I get a time for myself? How many of you have that me time? Say that 10 minutes or 20 minutes in a day for your own self, for your own hobbies, for your own self-growth, for your own introspection. Whereas today's youngsters take time off and they are on their own. In fact, that is very therapeutic in nature. Can we learn that thing, small thing from them rather than complaining? Can I learn that? Beautiful. Yes. There are so many things that we can learn from them. They come from abundance. Okay. Yes. Can I also feel that? Thank you, Padmini, ma'am. Very insightful and informative presentation. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. No complaints. First of all, open mind. Beautiful. Savitri Venugopal Rani says, open mind. Wonderful. Let's park our perceptions, mind steps, sets, stereotypical thinking aside. Let's keep it aside. Can I be open-minded? Only when I'm open-minded, I can learn something. If my cup is already full, it's filled with my own beliefs, my own stereotypical thinking. I may not be able to learn something. Today's youngsters are lapping up knowledge like anything. There are so many things. Like just to talk about COVID, there have been umpteen number of youngsters who have connected on various apps, delivering medicines, donating blood, organizing health camps, or raising funds, talking about crowdfunding, etc doing wonderful, phenomenal work, phenomenal work using technology. They have reached the remotest places, taken up organ donation, eye donation, blood donation, raised about lakhs and lakhs of rupees just using the technology. Isn't there something beautiful for us to learn? You and me probably couldn't even have thought of these 
ideas. They've done that. So is there something that I can learn? So that open-mindedness is very important. Rather than saying that my grandson is always on the phone or always on with his uh, mobile, etc. What is it that he's doing on his mobile? Is there something that I can learn or, from him? Or just take time to appreciate, oh, beautiful, you have developed this app or you've done this, created this graphic or this animation, beautiful. Many of these things have been brainchild of youngsters. Can we have that open mind to understand them better? Great, wonderful point put forth there. I missed that message, Wait, let me just go up. Yes, they're not planning to change, so only we have got to be more understanding. Maybe true, may not be true. Again, cannot generalize. Maybe, yes, they may not be as accommodative as us. Again, it could be the age, it could be, it could be the hormones, it could be, that no? uh, risky behavior could be many things. It's the age, probably the biology, the nature. But as a senior person, can I be that individual who can be more accommodative? Because with you, there is years of experience and wisdom. With the seniors, there's a lot of experience and wisdom. Whereas the youngsters of today may lack that. So probably, yes, you are right in that way. So we may have to or take that first step in being accommodated. We can learn from Gen Z, absolutely. Accept the present reality, appreciate every moment of being in the present, yes. Let's appreciate the beauty this technology has brought in. When the Zoom or the online session started, let uh, let me ask you all, how many of you took the help of your grandchildren or niece and nephews? Isn't it? Didn't we learn from them? Yes, your children, grandchildren. So let's appreciate that because of technology today, we are connecting in spite of the COVID or in fact, post COVID or although we have come a little away from it, we feel that this mode of learning is more comfortable. No traffic snarls, easy, sitting in the comforts of our home, we are connecting. So appreciate be happy that you are in this chronological time or this particular time where technology is around we are learning so beautiful yes we have to adjust and move forward we can only guide them spiritually brilliant we can guide them spiritually because probably if you feel that that is what these children or this generation needs what is spirituality by the way again my view of the spirituality may be very different from what they see it does not matter Let's make an attempt to connect beyond all this. Yes, we are very lucky we have a meditation circle which keeps pumping through thought-provoking lectures twice a week. Yes, we have kept ourselves busy, so very happy. So let's live in the moment. Celebrate this change. Celebrate every moment. And still appreciate what is around us. Probably this mindset, which is called as a growth mindset, the proactive behavior, the growth mindset is what we all have to adapt. Rather than being complainers, let's get into the growth mindset where it's fine. I'm okay with what I am. I'm okay with the way you are. We may be different in many ways, but we need each other. It's not you or me. It is you and me. And together, how do we survive? Together, how do we add value to each other's life? How, as a senior person, I empower you, educate you, and what is it that I learn from you? There's nothing wrong in accepting our mistakes, learning from our failures, and learning from youngsters. But if we have a complaint that they, they don't listen to us, let's see and talk probably in a language which they understand. And respect can be earned and it cannot be demanded so why do we have to understand why do we have to accommodate is because all of us have to travel the same road we all have to complete the same journey so the destiny is the same for us a happy fruitful life and a congenial society is what you or the youngsters want. So when the journey 
the, or the destination is the same for all of us, when the path is the same for all of us, it's just that the vehicles we have chosen is different. But together, let's cross or reach the destination in a happy, cordial way, learning from each other, collaborating with each other, and respecting each other. That can be done. It is not about Gen Z or Y or A or B. It's about humanity. It's about people. It's about celebration. It's about relationship. End of the day, that's what matters.